Uh, so just, just just one question here: If the USL is not specified by by uh, the customer, ideally uh, the the USL formula is uh, three times mean. Am I correct? Yes. Okay. So we will we will get into that calculation also when we will uh, uh, do the normality distribution. When we will calculate how do we do that? So sure. e so either either one of them is there. If 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 we only have USL or LSL. then we will not be able to calculate cp so if there is only one specification limit probably you try to add another but in case if you could not have both then in that case we will not be able to calculate cp okay yeah. so now i was talking about three conditions here uh, which can happen in cp when do we call cp is less than 1 when cp will be smaller than 1 when when the process by design will only create defects which means let's say i have a i have a lsl and i have a usl okay which means my specification limit my specification limit which is defined by the customer okay is not is outside the normal distribution which means it's outside the six sigma then i would say my cp is less than 1 when would i call cp is equal to 1 when cp of a process will be equal to the normal variation of a process which will exactly fit between usl and lsl okay in that particular case process will not create any defects as of now because it's fitting just on the specification limit okay the best case scenario would be when my cp is greater than 1 which means whatever my customer specification is my lsl or usl my process is capable of performing more than that so even though if there's any special cause variation comes i would not have any kind of defect okay so let me let me take an example to make you understand so so we all have seen we all have seen the garage uh, garage where we park our cars or a, we park our bikes also okay so let's say the length of your garage is uh, let's say 15 meters okay and the size of your car is between 13 to 15 meter okay in that particular case your car is 15 meter okay the length uh, the length of the garage is 13 to 15 so which means your car would be able to fit at a very uh, misfit side uh, uh, kind of way because in case if you try to buy a new car in the future your garage would not have that much space to get that car so in that case you are exactly on the specification limit so in that case cp is equal to 1 but if your car size is greater than your garage size which will not be able to meet the customer requirement in that case cp is less than 1 when do we call cp is greater than 1 when your garage when size when the garage size is greater than the car size absolutely in the limit yeah so that is a best case scenario when we call cp is greater than 1 so we will we will tell you the formula and oh. we'll tell you how to calculate it as well yes please yeah so we, uh, as an example so when in design we are uh, building the garage we should take into account the future possibilities and design the garage in such a way that even if you are upgrading the car to a uh, longer length it actually fits into the garage so that's why the cp should be greater than 1 absolutely because if we do not take the external factors into consideration uh, we might be good today but tomorrow with the external demands with the competitive advantage comes into picture uh, i might not be able to meet the customer requirement okay right. so, so, right. so that's why cp has to be greater than 1 this can also so like for example as... i'm sorry yeah so this is kind of factor of safety now simitrate this is factor of safety factor of meeting the customer requirement both yes 
Yeah, so uh, for example, in uh, like when we are, uh, say for example, developing some something like in, in, the, in the service industry, uh, maybe some automation stuff or something. So we also go ahead and look into the load, like how much load uh, or the exceptions handlings that we also look into. So yeah. that we keep all those features in effect so that in future, if any anything exceeds the normal, then our uh, product is able to handle that kind of a situation. So that 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 can be an example where CP is greater than one. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Okay, Which, fine. Thanks. So so if my CP is not greater than one, so for example, you're doing a project, okay, wherein you have LSL and USL, and when you calculate CP, so I'll talk about how to calculate CP also in a while. But let's say if your CP is less than one, you're doing a project, your CP is less than one, and you've already been given some instructions by your sponsor to do a project what would be your situation here what would you do what would you call your management could you repeat the question absolutely so what i'm saying is that let's say you've taken a project of improving uh, the turnaround time okay wherein you give wherein your customer wherein your business has given a limit that all the transactions should be completed within 15 to 30 minutes. Okay, why they've given a limit of 15? Because they are, they they suspect if you close before 15 minutes, you might be doing some compromise on the quality. So that's why they've given you a limit of 15 to 30. Okay, so so that's what you're doing a project on. And when you do the CP here, you calculate your CP as less than one. What would you tell your management? So we know if CP is less than one, which means this. this is not able to meet the customer requirement as of now only means the design is not good enough. What would you do in that case? So that is my question. Then what will tell your management? Uh, then we will, uh, you know, improve the process. Then we'll work on. We'll Redesign the process. We'll see why we why it is you know like why we are not able to have the CP at least equal to one. Yeah. And we'll find the cause and then we will, uh, you know, we will uh, resolve Redesign. get our, uh, get our uh, process within uh, the process capability of one at the very least. First thing which you want to do is, first we need to definitely inform the management. Second thing we have to do is we have to identify that process gap due to which, due to which my CP is less than one. Okay. It is very, very important to identify that process gap by doing discussion with the team that we have calculated the CP here and it, is, it has come out to be less than one. So in that case, I have to study my entire process altogether and identify that particular case and prepare an action plan for it and say that, you know, this is, this is something which we need to work on while working on the project as well. And if we are able to fix that quickly, then we can proceed further. Okay. So this is the thing that we have to do at that point in time, if CP is less than one, talk to the management and try identifying that particular one thing, which is leading to CP less than one so that we can work on that issue. Now let's, let's understand how to calculate, how to calculate CP. What is the formula for CP? As I said, CP's formula is USL minus LSL upon six standard deviation. And uh, so let's do that. And then we will learn CPU as well. So CP formula is equal to USL minus LSL divided by six standard six. Okay. So for that, I should have the standard deviation. And so let's say my USL is 15. Minutes LSL is five minutes, and my standard deviation is let's say four. Okay. So how I'll calculate CP? Can someone calculate CP for me? So I, I, I will divide by forty-two. So fifteen minus five will be ten. So ten divided by twenty-four. Because six hundred. CP has come out to 0 0.416667. It's less than one, right? 
Yeah. Yes, because there's a lot of standard deviation. The moment I change the standard deviation here, okay, I think it is two into six, which is twelve. Zero point six. It's coming out to be near than one. Okay, so which means that it is a standard deviation, which means there's a lot of variance in the process. You remember we learned basic stats last week where we learned. Yeah. Uh, so this is the same standard deviation I'm referring to. Okay. So this is how we this is how we can calculate CPU. Okay. So it could be a possibility that I need to look at why there is a lot of variance in the process, and therefore I'll be able to make a conclusion. So let me give you another scenario. Uh, my USL is twenty five. My LSL is twenty, and standard deviation is. Two it 